What's up everybody? Welcome to Golf of America, man. And here is your tip before you skip situation. You're changing the oil on a small engine and the capacity is less than a quart. You don't want to overfill it, right? Well, it's real easy. Go ahead and get you a solo cup and get you your quart of oil. My particular application is going to be using six tenths of a liter, six tenths of a quart. So we need to get it down to the 600 milliliter line. So that means we're going to take 400 out, right? If you know anything about drunks, you know that top ring right there on the solo cup is a fifth with an honest amount of ice or 400 milliliters. Go ahead, pour it up to that line, verify you still got your 0.6 quarts left, and then donate that oil to a machine that needs it more than you. What's up, y'all? Jason here. You know, I was planning on doing a cool little video for y'all since hurricane season's getting ready to kick off. I'm talking about generators. That way you guys can be one step closer to getting ready for the big one. But during the hurricane last year, I realized that the battery, the start battery in my particular generator was dead. So I decided to make another video specifically on maintenance this generator, the Genrack IQ 3500. Let's go. Ooh, that's heavy. If you're looking into getting one of these generators, I highly, highly recommend it. I've had this thing for like five years now, used it on a travel trailer, used it during some pretty long power outages. It pretty much helped me clean out my house after a hurricane. So the thing's been worked. It's definitely time for some maintenance. And let's get that battery fixed too, because when you're push brooming all the mud out of your place, you don't want to be yanking on the starter cord for the lights. All we need to access the engine compartment is just a flathead screwdriver and it'll swing right open. And just a little pro tip, when this thing's running in the sun, I leave this door open. It's gonna be a little louder, but it just gives a little bit more ventilation to the engine. That way you don't overheat it, especially if you got this thing running at the max. Once we have that front access door open, you can see pretty much everything we need. Here's your carburetor, your air cleaners right there. This is gonna be your oil drain fill. Kind of stinks that you gotta pour it out of there. There's not something in the bottom you can open up, but it is what it is. And there's a little plug in the bottom to help you get that oil out. And then up here, this is gonna be your plug wire you pop off and spark plug will be under there. All right, we'll start off by uh, pulling out our spark plug. I always try to be gentle, give even pressure on all sides of this little boot here. It's really short. And there's your plug. They do give you a spark plug tool. I'm not sure exactly where it is, so I'm gonna do it with a conventional spark plug socket. And the reason they give you that tool is because this is a really tight clearance right here. You can see now why they give you that little tool. The clearance is really small on that little opening they give you to access the spark plug. But just grab a pair of channel locks and you'll be able to work out your spark plug socket once you kind of feel that the spark plug's at the end of its threads. The spark plug doesn't look too bad. I think this thing probably has about 120 hours on that spark plug, maybe even more. It hasn't been on, so I can't verify that. Stay to the end of the video for that. But it's definitely time to replace the spark plug. And I also like to keep an extra spark plug handy because these things, the spark plug gaps will tend to kind of widen out on them if they get worked really hard. So you definitely want to keep an eye on your spark plug gap. With the spark plug out, I just put the, the little boot for the plug wire right back over that hole, keep any dust out, and then reach around the side and we'll pop out that air filter so we can get that thing cleaned up too. cleaning up this air filter. It says just clean it with a mild solution. I'm using a very watered down mix of Purple Power degreaser. This stuff is actually pretty good. I've used it on air filters for machinery in the military. So it works pretty good, just don't make it too strong. Another thing with these is you don't wanna wring them out. We're gonna let that chemical sit on there, do the work and then rinse it out nice and gently with the hose and let it dry. 
It's been about three minutes. Let's go ahead and rinse this off. And what we want to do is just pick a direction and go with it. You can see by the impressions, the indents here, this was the engine side. So there's some oil and stuff on here that'll probably get pushed further in if I rinse this way. But I'd rather do that than push dust this way. And any oil that might get deeper into here is just gonna add sort of to the filtration effects of this until it gets clogged. So find balance there, guys. Pretty much just going across it, pushing out the soap. A final blast. I actually got the water kind of pushing through there at a pretty high volume, you can see. So I got it up there so it doesn't put punch holes in this little foam. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and shake this out a little bit and then set it somewhere that's relatively dust free, not in the direct sunlight so it can dry while we're at the auto parts store. I am getting ready to do a video on the John boat. So if that's your sort of thing, make sure you subscribe, turn on that notification bell. I've been crushing the speckled trout, spotted trout out here. And I also caught a snook the other day on a sabiki rig on a little tiny kiddie pool. It was freaking awesome, man. This boat has definitely opened up doors for the fishing world. Little bungee cord. Give you a nice little amount of uh, room to work on this. Couple Phillips head, or it looks like a couple little three eighths uh, hex bits. There's a little fuse right here. It's also worth checking out if you're not getting any crankage with your start button. I got the fuse open, but see, it's one of those ones where it's kind of like a ceramic. So you can't see the inside there. So I'll show you how to check that. Multimeter, go ahead and grab the finest multimeter that Harbor Freight offers, because your good one, yes, that's right, it washed away in the storm. And man, that makes repairing electrical stuff really hard afterwards, so keep these in your glove box, guys. All right, so we got it on the ohm setting. We're just basically gonna check for resistance. This one means we have an open circuit. If you watch, I tap them together, the number goes down because we're completing the circuit. So we wanna make sure that electricity can pass from one side of this fuse to the other. And bam -o, that is a good fuse, fellas. Let's go uh, online and see if we can find this battery. All right, guys, I found that battery. It is a six amp hour, 12 volt battery. It's two and a half inches by four and a half inches by five. I found it on the Home Depot website under a brand called Mighty Max or something like that, $24. I'll put the link in the description below, free shipping, pretty much just as good as Amazon. There was a few sites selling them as gen batteries for this particular gen, but they wanted a hundred bucks. Sucker. All right, guys, battery is on order. We got the air filter drying. Just gotta go to the local parts store to grab a couple things. I'm gonna pick up that spark plug. The original one that was in it is a Bosch, but um, I guess they don't make it anymore. I couldn't find it anywhere online, and the replacement is some company called Tosh with the same part number. I used to love the TV show. I don't know about their spark plugs uh, and their reliability, especially in something like a, a disaster. So I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna go with the NGK um, equivalent. And uh, yeah, we'll tune this puppy out. Also, we're gonna pick up some oil. Take a look at the oil viscosity chart here. Um, if you're gonna be running this thing in the winter, maybe go with the 5W, but I'm just gonna hit a single weight 30 on this because I will never be operating it below 30, 20 degrees or whatever it has on this chart. Well, we're just about to advanced auto parts because man, I live so close and do I love that. I leave Gulfport and I come right back to Gulfport. Well, I just realized that I don't have a spark plug gapper anymore. I actually had a whole container full of them, but once they get hit with salt water, they're probably not gonna be as accurate. But I remembered that I bought a set of feeler gauges just for this Relic 62 Tele that I put together. So I have these, I'm gonna stack them and we'll measure it. If you're into guitars, custom guitars, building guitars, and that's something you wanna see, make sure you let me know down in the comments because we can get on some wormholes on that. I like to go on the smaller side just because they are gonna end up widening a bit. 
So this one's definitely bigger than 24. Let's see if it's bigger than 28, just on a go, no go, right out of the box status. All right, here's 28. And it's right at about 28. Let's see what our used one's at. That's a little bit below 28. And I gapped this thing probably about 10 hours ago, engine run time. Because it was during the storm and I was running this thing about 14 hours a day. Yeah, so it's gonna be down right around 25, 24. And that's where I'm gonna put the new plug. Yeah, we're right at about 24. 25 won't fit. And 24 slides right in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and get 24 on this new one. I'm gonna go ahead and check it. And all I did was push this into a two by four very gently. And we're right there at 24. Go ahead and put a little bit of anti-seize. I always put these in a Ziploc bag. Don't need to use as much as you think. Because as this screws in, it's going to be feeding it on the other threads. So, I mean, that's really all you need, guys. I did end up finding that OEM spark plug tool. So, we'll go ahead and use this to put it back in. Manual says to go hand tight with the tool and then put that T-bar on and go another three eighths to a half a turn. We want to strip out a spark plug thread. So let's go. I mean, that feels tight. I'm just going to stop there. And there's a little gasket on this spark plug too. All right, that's about equivalent of just over three eighths under half. Go ahead and snap our boot back on. That's it for the spark plug guys, easy peasy. I'm gonna go ahead and get set up and get this oil out of here as we got a little bit of rain coming in. All right, we're gonna go ahead and drain out this oil. You see my rig here, I got a big old tub with some cardboard on it, my catch can under it, and Jen is sitting up on a table because we gotta open up this little spout and basically just pour it out of the side of the engine. It is gonna make a mess, so have some paper towels on deck. This is obviously easier if you're strong. Just as planned, the oil drained pretty much all into the casing on the table. The only way to really avoid that is if you had like a suction cup, but that's just more stuff to have. All right, now we got our pre-measured oil. Just gonna go ahead and pour shorty a shotgun. Waiting on the air filter to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice, well-deserved wipe down with some purple power. This fill cap right here is an area where contamination can get into your fuel kind of unknowingly, and it does get dirty when you're out in the field. So make sure you keep this little area clean, including the underside of the cap. know about y'all but I am ready to fire this thing up test it and see how it's running I did just put the battery back in the dead one just for a placeholder so the leads aren't flying around in there once the air filter got dry just snapped it back in but make sure with your fingers that it's really in there all the way there's a metal backing plate that uh, goes between that foam filter and the back side of that box towards the carburetor make sure that gets in there and then you'll hear a nice healthy snap 
when the air cleaner housing is all the way together. One last little devil of a maintenance item on this thing, but it's also often overlooked, and it's a legal requirement in some places, is the flame arrester. It's really hard to get to on this. I tried to get to it one time by taking the four screws off around the back of the housing, and that's not all there is to it. The solution is you gotta get you some of these little U-joint um, sockets and just kind of make it work that way with an extension. But once you get it off, I just go ahead and cover it in the same exact solution of uh, the perp stuff that I put on the air cleaner, just a mild dilution. Let it sit for about five minutes, hit it with some of that hot Florida hose water. It's probably about 140 degrees coming out of the hose right now. Get it up back in there and you're ready to rock. Just in case you were wondering that flame arrester, that's in case for if and when your generator backfires, doesn't throw a flame out there and burn down a whole freaking park or something. It's a Cali thing, but it makes sense in other places too. But when it gets clogged up, it will highly reduce the efficiency and the power of your machine. See how much fuel is in here. Fuel doesn't look too bad, but I definitely want to burn it up. Always use a fuel stabilizer. Store it with the least amount of fuel possible. This thing hasn't been on since it was pulling long days after a storm. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly she fires up. This one, you put it on choke, it turns it on. And then pretty much immediately after it starts running, you switch it over to run. So let's see how many pulls she takes. Forgot where the puller was. That is a good generator. If that doesn't make you want to buy it right there, you might as well just go to the next video. She has 246 hours on her. Fuel says a hundo, but I doubt it. 15 hours left. Oof. All right, hot day in Florida, let's load her up. See what kind of implement I'm gonna torture this with. Oh yeah, right here, this is the MVP. This for hurricane season. See, this'll keep you cool and dry your pad back out. Well, not your pads, you're gonna toss those, but you know what I mean, your floors. Oh yeah. I'm gonna start on one, and then I'm gonna hit two, and then I'm gonna hit three. That way y'all can hear her load up. Now with the eco on, it's pretty much a whisper, this generator. That's why I love it. All right guys, that's a wrap. Thanks a lot for coming by help me maintain my generator. Hopefully I taught you guys a little something about yours or talked you into getting this one. It's been a great machine. And right now that little fan's pulling eight amps at 120 volts, so it's pretty high. It's, it's over a thousand watts. It's almost half the capacity of this thing and it's just whispering along. Thanks a lot, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. See you next time, peace.